The Australian Children's Television Foundation and ACME acknowledge the traditional owners, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, on whose unceded lands we are joining you today. We honour their continuing cultures and connection to the lands, waters and skies. We pay our respects to Elders past, present and emerging and extend our respect to First Nations people from all nations of this land. Teachers, please share your students' responses and questions in the Zoom chat throughout the workshop. And let's start by sharing the names of the traditional owners of the lands on which you're joining us today. Hello and welcome to all the schools joining us today. My name is Janine and I'm from the Australian Children's Television Foundation. I'm so happy that you're joining us today for this virtual workshop. We're here to learn about a brand new TV show that's playing on NITV and Netflix. Hi there, my name is Zoe. I'm from ACME, Australia's National Museum of Screen Culture. And I would love to introduce our special guest for today, AFL superstar, author, TV producer, footy commentator, founder of his own foundation and all round legend, Eddie Betts. Welcome, Eddie. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Fab. That's a awesome welcome. <laughs> Thank you for, for that. I'm a bit uh, flustered. <laughs> um, Eddie, we have a few interesting uh, things decorating our desk today. Um, we have your wonderful books here, of course. Um, we also have a little footy here. Uh, this one belongs to my little two-year-old daughter. Um, we put that here because many of the students here in the audience will know you as an AFL legend. And I know we have a lot of young footy fans watching who are going to love hearing from you. Uh, you're not playing footy anymore, but you're still very involved in the game. Can you tell us a bit about what sort of work you're doing now? Yeah, sure. Well, for those who don't know me um, that are watching, my name's Eddie Betts. I'm a Wurrungu Kuthara Gabra man. Wurrungu Kuthara is from the far west coast of South Australia. That's where my father's from and Gabra is from Kalgoorlie, Western Australia, where my mother's from. And I played footy for 18 years at the top level. I played at the Carlton Football Club and I played at the Adelaide Football Club, which is in South Australia. So 18 years of playing AFL footy, I thought I'd have to, <laughs> my time has come. Um, you know, I've got five beautiful children, uh, Louis Betts, Billy Betts, Alice and Maggie, twin girls, and Sonny. So my time now is more so spending time with them as a father and chasing them around. I coach Louis, my oldest footy side, um, Ashburton Redbacks, and I don't know why I did that because that's pretty, <laughs> he doesn't listen to me at all. Um, you know, and I coached at Geelong. So once I finished playing footy, I went to Geelong and coached there. We won the premiership two years ago. And then I finished up there. And now, like I said, coaching my boys side. I work at Fox Footy, which is kind of commentating games, going into studios, just like this, talking to the cameras on Fox Footy, uh, talking to the players on the game. So I really enjoy that, uh, that part of it. And then I have a foundation out at the moment, the Eddie Betts Foundation, and that's just giving young Aboriginal kids an opportunity to chase their dreams, whether it's education or sports. Yeah, awesome. sounds so awesome. I think it's awesome. <laughs> Great opportunity. Um, we also have your books here, as I mentioned earlier, and we have the book My Kind. Students in the audience, put up your hand if you have read this one. Yeah, a few people have read that one. Awesome, hands down. Uh, this book is all about including others and spreading kindness together. And hands up if you've read this one here, My People. Awesome, hands down, quite a few people there. This book celebrates First Nations people, culture and languages. We've got quite a few in the chat here also saying you've read the books, fantastic. And teachers, these books are also fantastic to share in the classroom with your students too. Um, Eddie, you've packed so much learning and uh, just awesome messages into these books. Can you tell us a bit about why you wrote them? Yeah, firstly, well, growing up in communities, I really didn't go to school. And so reading and writing was really hard for me. So when I, I started to learn to read and write properly when I was 18 at the Carlton Football Club, and so it was, it was really tough. So I wanted kids to read, especially Aboriginal kids, read at a, at a young age. And reading is tough, and I wanted to make it enjoyable, fun, engaging, and you know, we sat down and wrote my my kind first, which is the the blue book here, and and it's all about spreading the message of kindness. It's the way that 
I was brought up, mm. uh, the values that in, were installed in me as a young kid is to treat everyone how you like to be treated. There's a bit of stamping out bullying in this book, which happens to this day within schoolyards. So uh, I wanted kids to relate to it. There's different um, nationalities, um, different cultures within this book. So I want, I want kids to, to pick up and read the book, to spread that message of kindness, but to actually see themselves as one of those characters. Um, mm. And it shows leadership as well. But the main message is to help kids read at a young age and stay engaged with reading and make reading fun. Because it's rap too, it's, you know, rap yourself in kindness with Eddie and his little homies. So that's why, you know, I wanted to write that book. And then the second book, My People, um, is about our culture and our history. And I wanted to, uh, Australia to, to learn about, especially kids at a young age, to learn about Aboriginal history and our culture. And, you know, it's about what our flag represents to us, uh, what the elders, how we survived off the land for 60,000 years. Um, you know, it, it was what our spirituality, our music, our art, our dance, and mm. to spread that message at home on the couch so kids can learn about our culture and our history. Because I want to create change here in Australia, but to have this book out, you know, it's not me that's going to create change, it's the rest of Australia and the people that read the book and educate themselves on our culture. So that was probably one of the biggest reasons as well why I wrote the book about our culture, my people. Oh, awesome. I love hearing all about these books from you. Um, and when you say about the wrapping, that's something really special about these books as well that's been carried into the TV show, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. So we're going to learn a little bit more about this TV show today. It's called Eddie's Little Homies and it's on NITV and Netflix. I bet you were excited when you were asked to make a TV series. Uh, so we know that the rap carries over into the sh series. What else is similar between the books and the TV series? Well, Eddie, Eddie, the character himself, carries over into the cartoon series. Um, and just little things about kids working out the difference in a, in a playground w without parents around supervising that, showing leadership, being kind to one another, treating people how you like to be treated. So we have two raps in it, which talks about what they've have to overcome the issues that they face in these playground and then they go out after the rap, figure out how to do it and then rap about them solving it and then finish it. So it's keeping kids yeah. engaged the whole way. Ah. Um, and so, yeah, it's very exciting. It's so catchy too. Yeah. I found myself like... It is catchy. <laughs> I'll sing it at home as well. So <laughs> all the songs are, are awesome. You know, we have Aboriginal, app, Ab Aboriginal rap um, artists rapping the songs rap producers that wrote the songs and you know it's very engaging and catchy as well. Awesome and really good um, for teachers who are watching to know that um, that use of the raps is for the conflict resolution in the narrative. You can probably pull those out in lots of different ways in the classroom I think. One sets up the problem and one reflects on the problem once it's resolved. That's really cool for teachers to use in the classroom. Yeah it is and when you speak about rap people think oh rap it's pretty heavy metal and like it's it, there's different ways you can rap and this is wrapping yourself with kindness wrapping yourself in education and it's got those key messages in there but in a funky rap way yeah so yeah it's pretty cool awesome so as I said our audience of teachers and students they all know that stories or narratives involve characters settings and events and one way that Eddie's Little Homie shows kindness and inclusion is through the great characters in the TV series Let's take a look at the trailer where we can meet some of these great characters. Hey, you mob. Hey, hey, Junior. hey Junior. Come and meet the gang. This is my brother boy, Eddie. Hey. And that's Dex and the half pie. Hell, Rotty, Lucky, Shanti up there. And that's the Grumpy Pigeon. <laughs> There's a new crew in the playground. Are you ready? You can't spell ready without Eddie. So let's get to it. And we want you to be part of the gang. Awesome! Yeah! Big dog, why don't you take it away? Oh. So why don't you join us? May the best kid win. Yeah! Woohoo! For big adventures. We gotta help Junior. Now's our chance to save our friends. You've got this. And even bigger beats. Once you're in, you can't get out. It's too much fun without, without a doubt. doubt. So come on, bring your imagination. Yeah! Yeah! And get ready. Got it! What do we do now? Go! To expect the unexpected. I got a plan. I got all the treats a puppy wuppy would ever wanty wanty. Don't look, Junior. Because best friends yeah. always have the best fun. Stop! 
unauthorized use of a ladder in a public area. Well, nearly always. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so partner up, let's play! Yeah. We're Freddy's little homies. It looks amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think Junior's right. It does look amazing. I love this trailer. <laughs> Everyone's having so much fun together in that series. And one thing I really love is that it's the kids playing together without any adults in the yard helping them figure out those problems, right? <laughs> so we were introduced to the characters Junior, Eddie, Dex, Tal, Lottie, Lockie, Shanti, and that grumpy pigeon <laughs> at the end. <laughs> um, so I'm really interested to know what real life Eddie and this character Eddie have in common. Um, did anyone in the audience spot a special skill that Eddie and that character might share? Anyone in the chat got any ideas? Yes, you're right. <laughs> I did see Eddie was kicking a goal in that clip. And uh, I'm guessing that's <laughs> not a coincidence. Is there uh, anything else that you and the character have in common, Eddie? Oh, I was going to say dunking the basketball on the ring, but I can't dunk. So <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, even to bring that sport aspect of it, to have an AFL footy in a cartoon series, I don't think that's, that's out, you know, out there where kids in Australia can watch Eddie kick a ball on, on, on yep. a cartoon series. So, uh, yeah, like I said, it's more so that, that act of kindness, treating everyone how you like to be treated, um, bringing people together, care, empathy, uh, and just always having a smile on his, on his face. And that's the way I played my footy. Everyone I played my footy, all I did was go out and smile. That means I was having fun mm. and I was enjoying it with that big smile. Oh, awesome. That's awesome. I always came across too. I was just thinking if Tao was a, a real life character, he could build you a contraption to help you dunk the yeah. ball. <laughs> yeah, we should get that <laughs> hopefully the next, next season. Next season yeah. <laughs> um, so, Eddie, we also know that you're not the only one in your family represented in the show. Can you tell us a bit about the character of Junior? Yeah, well, it, um, well, all the characters in the show uh, are a lot older than Junior. So Junior's the youngest in the show. Um, and all the, uh, I guess, the other characters are voiced by, by adults. Mm -hmm. And so for Junior, we wanted to look for a real real life kid. Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of kids auditioned, and then my son auditioned as well, Billy. He just suited the character so well. So Billy eventually won the role as Junior. But yeah, very excited, you know, yeah. for Billy. And I think that he makes that character and it kind of makes the the cartoon series just having a, a young kid in hearing his voice and you know he's vocal in every single mm. episode it, it does add that nice um aspect to the show where there's a mentor and you know junior's looking up to eddie as well and learning yeah. from him yeah well it, it, this is the way that i've grown up too because mm. in big big aboriginal family we always grow up with all our older brothers and sisters. So I grew up in a house with 32 kids. Yeah. No, sorry, 32 of us in a three bedroom house. And you know, I had 18 first cousins and an Aboriginal family, our first cousins are our brothers and sisters. Mm. And so Junior looks up to Eddie as an older brother. Yeah. Brother mm. Fika looks mm. up to all of them and wants to follow him the way that I did to my older brothers. I followed them around. I was like their little tiger nagging them. And that's what Junior is in this episode. I love that Junior though also sometimes holds the wisdom like sometimes they actually need to learn from him. They need to listen <laughs> and to he's Junior. Like, actually, guys. <laughs> yeah, so you'll find that out on the yeah. first episode in Yoinks, yeah, uh, yeah. where he kind of leads from example, Junior, That's because right. Eddie's worrying about kicking goals and his imagination. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, nah, yeah, it'll be very exciting. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so cool. And I and I guess like when he was uh, doing the voice, he would have been about the same age as maybe some of the kids in the audience today. Because how old is? Yeah, he was in year two. Year so two. He was in there year two go. when he did it. So he did it last yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in year two, so you yeah, had to step fantastic. out of school in year two. But you never know, yeah. kids, we there might go into season, uh, season two and we're looking for yeah. vo voice actors. So we might get some more kids in. So if you're good, put your hand up. Yeah, we might, get you, we might get you in. Awesome. Sounds great. Um, I would love to share with you all a clip of Eddie and Junior together. So why don't we take a look? Jeepers, Edward. How did you even do that? Skills, Tal. Skills. <laughs> hey, Junior. You and, uh, Big Junior want to play? Ha! Huh. Good one, Eddie. What? Big Junior's not here. He's gone to the toilet. Yeah, I knew that. I was just mucking around, Junior. So, Junior, tell us more about Big Junior. Like what? Like... 
What happened? Well, he's big. Bigger than you? Yeah. Why, why bigger than me? What else? He's smart. Smarter than me? Way smarter than you, Tull. Uh, yes! What else? He's funny. Funnier than me? Heaps funnier than you, Lottie. What else? He's good at sport. As good as me? Much better. I don't think so. Look! <gasps> much, much, much better. <laughs> What a funny clip. It seems like Junior's invisible friend must be amazing at everything. So in this clip we saw that all the friends in the group have different skills. So some are funny or good at sports. And when they combine their skills, they can achieve goals together. Like how the players on a footy team come together to achieve their goals. This gives me a great idea for an activity for kids to do in the classroom now. Let's think, pair and share about our own unique strengths and skills. Students, we'll give you a moment to think quietly about your strengths and skills, and then we'll have 30 seconds to share your ideas with a partner. Teachers, please share some of your students' responses in the chat. Oh, we have some great responses in the chat here. Yes, some kids are good at fishing. We've got someone also good at basketball, like the characters in the show, uh, great at cooking. And we even heard from a teacher who's great at teaching. Now, this is, <laughs> this is a great skill to have. Uh, Zoe and I shared our ideas in the break too. Eddie, can we share them with you? Yes. Yes, I'd love okay. To hear them. So, Zoe told me that she loves drawing, and I Yay. hear she's actually very good at it. She draws every chance she can get. Yeah. <laughs> and I heard from Janine that she loves reading and that she has read, was it nine? Nine. Big yep. chapter books so far this year. Yep. So many. It's amazing. Um, and Eddie, we all know what some of your special qualities are, but I wonder if you have any special strengths that you would like to share with our audience as well. Yeah, well, my, my strength, well, when I look at it, it's more so, you know, the way that the values that I have is that kindness. That's a strength of mine is just to be, be kind, treat everyone how you like to be treated, uh, and leadership as well. Leadership comes in all different shapes and forms. Um, for me, the way that I lead, I like to bring people together and I care for one another, and that's leadership in itself. So everyone has different ways of leading, and so my leadership, like I say, is mm. in bringing people together and making people smile. That's awesome. Um, so we would actually like to incorporate these ideas into a drawing activity now, and we would love you to join us. So it's time to get out your paper and pencils and keeping those lovely strengths and unique qualities in mind, we'd love to take two minutes for you to draw a character based on yourselves. Um, we're gonna do a character based on our strengths with you. So we're all gonna draw two. So we'll take two minutes and um, you got your marker. I've Eddie? got my marker, but this is not part of my strength. So if you like <laughs> thick figures. And that's a good point. Remember that it doesn't have to be a masterpiece. It can just be whatever comes to you on the page. So it doesn't have to be perfect. That's a really important thing. So, all right, let's, let's just get started. Get into hey? it. All right. Okay. I'm going to start drawing. With, I just find it easy to start with my head. <laughs> I'll do a big smile. I'm going to do my glasses. Okay, now, how are you guys going? <laughs> so I, I've got my glasses and I'm going to try and bring in some of these strengths. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to try and do a paintbrush in my hand. <laughs> okay. With some paint on it. And the other hand painting palette, you know those pieces of board or wood where you put all your paint colours on and you can hold it in your hand. And then I'm going to put some paint all over my t-shirt and 
all over myself because I always get messy. Sensible shoes on for painting. Oh, I love it, Eddie. Eddie's character's got a great cap on. I thought you weren't strong at You're drawing. This is, good. this is looking good, Eddie. <laughs> I'm going to have to add this to your intro. <laughs> Artist. All right. Oh, forgot my nose there. There we go. Eyebrows. And on my T-shirt says art. I love art. There we go. Oh, Janine's got, oh, you've got a tree. I, uh, the tree's not part of me, but um, it is showing I live in the country and I like being around nature and I love bird watching. <laughs> so I thought I'd bring in a tree as well. <laughs> Who else is in your picture with you, Eddie? Uh, just a, a random player that I've got to <laughs> play against. Oh, nice. um, so I'm on the footy field. Excellent. And I'm taking a specky. Uh, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, that's time up for everyone. So um, I hope you got a fantastic drawing in there and uh, that's something you can discuss with your friends. Let's show, let's hold them up. So I don't know if you could <laughs> zoom on that one just here. So that's, uh, oh, look at that's that. Eddie smiling this, um, on this the footy field. This player has no chance. Yeah, that. but the little player must be, must be pretty big here. That little player must be smaller than me. I'm quite small, but jumping over someone, taking a pack mark, then kicking the goal at the end of it. Awesome. And your, your trademark smile. God, you <laughs> nailed it. Awesome. Thanks very much, Eddie. Teachers, hang on to those drawings because we're going to send you some fun ideas for extending this task in the classroom. And we'll also send a new uh, teaching resource that you can use when you're watching the Eddie's Little Homies TV show. I really love this activity because it shows how we all have our different strengths. We all have our different perspectives. And what's fantastic is that these differences can make us stronger. We're all stronger when we come together. So when we're trying to come up with new ideas or make a decision or solve a problem, it's so helpful to have those lots of different perspectives. Um, Eddie, do you have a favourite moment from the TV series where the characters come together to solve a problem? Yeah, it would have to be Eddie in the middle. Eddie in the middle where um, Lottie and Tal and Eddie are in this episode and they are... Uh, it's a big sculpture that they have to make, an artwork sculpture. And so they're working together on it is uh, Lottie and Tal. And one wants it taller, one wants it smaller. They start bumping heads while they're working together on this beautiful sculpture. And they start fighting and then they split up. They say, okay, I'll do it my own and Tal will do it his own. And then where Eddie comes into it, Eddie is the one that likes to help everyone. So he's dragged into the, the middle of it. So that's what's Eddie in the middle. And Lottie wants Eddie, then Tal wants Eddie to help. And he's, in the end, he just gets burnt out. They end up making this sculpture, but it doesn't look quite right in the end until they both come to terms and figure out what if we combine them back together. And when they combine it together, it becomes this beautiful sculpture. And you know they, they worked out their differences uh, to bring their sculpture back together and it's beautiful. Oh, perfect. Um, that really is going to illustrate what we're talking about here today. Let's take a look at that clip. Done. Oh. Ah. Oh. Are we ready? Uh -huh. Yeah. On three. One, two, three. What? Huh? They look... Um... Nice. Interesting. Different. Hmm. Push them a little closer together. But... Please. Just a little more. And a bit more. And just a tiny, wincy little bit more. That? Mm-hmm. You sure did. Who would have thought those two not very good things would make one better thing? I know. Who would have thought that sometimes two can be better than one?
two friends, two hands, two brains, two plans. Two things he gotta do, so much easier with two. Hey! Two halves of one thing, join together. It's so much better. One work of art, not so good in two parts. But when two become one, it's great. And fun, yeah! Two halves of one thing, join together. Epic. So much better. Sometimes you can't see how deadly it could be. Yeah! yeah well, someone's point of view, but it's down to you. Let's go! Two halves of one thing, join together. Amazing! You did a great job, Lottie. You did too, Tal. You both did. But maybe next time you can do it without all the arguing. And without me, yeah? I reckon we can. Me too. You just gotta learn to listen to each other and work together. Look! Even that bird loves your sculpture! Aww. <laughs> 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 A lot of people can relate to those pigeon moments. They can relate to that noise and what that pigeon did oh, to yeah. their beautiful sculpture. The grumpy pigeon. Grumpy <laughs> pigeon, great character. Um, those wraps are super catchy too. I felt like I couldn't sit in my seat. I wanted to get up and like... <laughs> yeah, it is. It's very catchy and very easy to rap about. And they're rapping about, you know, kindness and working mm. together and bringing this beautiful sculpture to one. And so that's good messages to send to these kids within their classrooms. Awesome. Yeah. And I hope everyone's gonna start doing some rapping back at school to, you know, put their values into <laughs> some um, cool raps. Um, and it really showed, like we said, how different perspectives can solve problems and make decisions. And we've been thinking that another way to make a decision with your friends uh, or to solve a problem is to play rock, paper, scissors. Now, some of the characters in the series you might have already seen are rock, paper, scissors experts. I'm curious, Eddie, uh, are you good at rock, paper, scissors in real life? Yes, I am. I'm <laughs> unbeatable Eddie. Well, mm. I think we should have a game. I think yep. we can't let you leave here without having a game. And we thought maybe you could give us a quick refresher and maybe the people watching back at school on how it works. Yes, so we wanted to bring back stuff that kids can relate to or, or do in the playground. And so we thought of rock, paper, scissors again. And so uh, it's hand out like this, flat. Yep. And it's rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Okay, so you got three So counts. you've both got mindsets to go on scissors. So I've already <laughs> got it in my head. So I know exactly what you guys, you guys are going to do. So, um, and so, and then it's rock, paper, scissors, shoot, you go paper, then yep. rock, paper, scissors, you can rock. go rock. Yep. But rock, it's rock beats scissors. Yeah. Paper covers rock. Yeah. Scissors cuts paper. Okay. So, if you if you someone goes paper, someone goes scissors. Scissors wins. Okay. Someone goes rock. Someone goes paper. paper and is wins. paper on the side of? Paper is flat. Paper flat. Okay. Yeah. Or yep. you can do it whatever way you want. Long as your hand is flat, you can't okay. be crooked and yeah, like that. You can't that. be halfway between. You can't be halfway between scissors <laughs> and and rock. But it's it's got a catchy thing. It's uh, rock. Paper, scissors, it's the name of the game. Play it yep. once and you'll never be the same. So, I love it. Amazing. Yeah. So who so is, ha, let's decide between a rock, paper, scissors battle, who goes up against unbeatable be Eddie? Yes, because in the character, yeah. Eddie is unbeatable Eddie. Okay. That's so right. no one can let's beat him. Let's try, okay, I'm just going to okay. warm up my hands. Hang on. Okay, okay now okay, I ready? don't want to do scissors. Okay, are you ready? Oh, yeah, I like that mind games. I love the mind games. Maybe hands up a bit so okay. the students back at school can see. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Rock. rock Paper, scissors. scissors. Oh, hang on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I went too hard. Go again. Rock, paper, paper scissors, scissors, shoot. Yes. Oh, okay. okay. Unbeatable you. Eddie. Oh, now. okay. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors, scissors shoot. shoot. Oh, oh, it's true. Unbeatable, unbeatable Eddie. Eddie. The is a mind true. reader because she did scissors the first time when we did it. She went, Whoosh, so I knew that you were going to go scissors. That's there why Eddie is unbeatable. Eddie. There you go. In the show and in, in real life. In the show and in real life. Yep. I wonder who is uh, <laughs> unbeatable back at school. So if you could turn to your partner right now for your own quick RPS game, you've got about 30 seconds to play and go.
How did you go at rock, paper, scissors there in the classroom? Do you have any champions? This is a great way to help you solve easy problems in the classroom or the playground or even at home. You could sort things out with siblings or parents or friends at home. Teachers and students, you can find the Rock, Paper, Scissors episode and other Eddie's Little Homies episodes on NITV and Netflix. And we also have a great new learning resource for schools that involves episodes from the show. Eddie, we've enjoyed speaking with you so much today. It's been so much fun and it's been really nice getting to know about your, all of your thinking behind the stories and the animation and all about kindness and friendship and all those things that are your values and that drive you. Um, do you have any final words for our students out there in the audience? Yeah, well, my message for students, uh, no matter where you are or what you do, is just to be kind. Kindness is the easiest thing to do. Treat people how you like to be treated, because if you're not treated right, how does that make you feel? So always treat people how you like to be treated. Spread kindness, because it's the easiest thing to do. And in the classroom, if you're stuck, always put your hand up to, for someone to help because there's always someone in the classroom to help you. No matter what happens, put your hand up and ask for help and speak up. That's awesome advice. Thanks, Eddie. And also thanks to the schools who've joined us today. We hope you've had fun. Um, teachers out there, we're dropping a feedback link into the chat for you and we would love to hear your thoughts on today's workshop. We're going to say goodbye now. We thank you again, Eddie, for being with us today and coming in to hang out and chat. Um, we're going to say goodbye and leave you with one of our favourite raps from Eddie's Little Homies, which we'll be all warmed up for, Rock, Paper, Scissors. Thanks, Eddie. Thanks, guys. Take it easy. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Rock, Paper, Scissors is the name of the game. Play it once and you'll never be the same. The match is over. It was lots of fun. And I'm not just saying that because I won. Challenge yourself. Give it a go. And if you lose, get up and go for one more. Confidence is good. Getting cocky is bad. It's not about winning, but the memories you have. Rock, Paper, Scissors is the name of the game. Play it once and you'll never be the same. Rock, Paper, Scissors is the name of the game. Play it once and you'll never be the same.